Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Brian and Jim here of Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour Podcast. Yes, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 253. Thank you for joining us tonight. Big shout out and thanks to Kevin and Fudge from Palette Swap for hopping on last week. Had a great time talking to them. Definitely make sure to check out all the links in that episode. Give them all the follows. You're doing a lot of good stuff over there. And the guest train keeps on rolling this week as we have a special guest joining us tonight. You have probably seen him playing along to some classic music tracks under his handle of Drummy Boy Advance, either on Twitter or Instagram or all the good stuff. Or you might have seen him as the drummer of a little band called Rex Viper at coming to a convention near you. Tonight we have Brad Conklin. Brad, what's going on, man? Hello, thank you. That was a very nice intro. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Don't worry about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those, you're not used to the compliments, so I'm like, oh. <laughs> you're too used to all the channels that are like, Rex Viper performed and it was a disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, believe it or not, I avoid those. Isn't that weird? <laughs> you trying to increase the quality of life? What? <laughs> yeah. Constructive criticism is one thing, but you know. <laughs> But no, it's awesome to be here. And like, guys, congrats, like 253 episodes. That's insane, right? Like, nobody's that high. So that's 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 really something to be proud of. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, bud. No, I mean, it's been one of those things we've been joking about. It's like, one, you can't believe we hit this friggin' many. But to your point, and, uh, you know, I guess by this point, Thought Cop's final episode did air. Yeah, a lot of our buddies have been doing it. Um, it's been dropping off, so I hate mm-hmm. to see it happen. But, you know, one of the best things about doing this, we've always said, first, it was just an excuse for Jim and I to get away, drink together, get away from the girlfriends and wives, <laughs> mm-hmm. play games and drink. And then the podcast was like, all right, well, that's a thing to do more during COVID. And the yeah. best part was getting to meet people. And, you know, we actually got to meet you through some of the conventions. Yeah. Had some drinks with you. So, Oh, what a first you know, impression I had. <laughs> Jim, have you ever made a good first impression? I'm still trying to figure that out. I don't I think, think you so. Are. Even my wife yeah, I, didn't like me at first. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were good, Jim. Like, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things you're always very self reflective in a public setting, right? You always do that the next day. Like, oh shit, man, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, so. I've, I've done much more. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, woke yeah. up, I was just a sleepy boy that night. That's all. You were very <laughs> sleepy, that's for sure. <laughs> but that was cool. That was uh, that was Magfest, yeah. I think uh, not this previous one, the one before. I didn't go this year, unfortunately, but uh, that was a good time. I had a very good time at that Magfest. Yeah, we weren't yeah, able to make it either. That was our first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, that was... It was my first as well. True. It was an experience. I mean, obviously, you have a different mentality. You're there performing. You're there mm-hmm. doing other stuff. So, I mean... Right off the bat, I know Jim already plugged it, but before we move on, <laughs> where do you want people to find you? Where should they be subscribing and listening to you? Just shout it yeah. out for folks. I, I think best is probably Instagram, uh, Drum Boy Advance. That's where I do all my videos. I do once a week. I try to do every Wednesday. And uh, it's something that I started doing during COVID. I bought a microphone set for my drum set and uh, just kind of just did it for fun like i've always been a drummer i've always been playing um in 2019 we traveled to australia with a band i was in called 8-bit and when we got back it was it was november 2019 so like was it march we shut down yes so we had plans to go to japan and we were going to go do this and do that and we came home and i was like well see you guys in who knows how long so i just like ordered that from sweetwater set my stuff up and started the videos and uh it's crazy because I have like almost, it's almost four years of videos at this point. You know, you can see every Wednesday for the last four years. I think I missed maybe one week, which it's one of those things, right? Right. You should take more breaks, you know, but uh, (laughs) it's like got to keep putting them out. But um, it's cool because it turned into like a resume. You know, if anybody wants to know what I can do for them in the studio or anything I could do for them live, they just go to any of those sites and check out my videos. And to your point, it's a lot of classic games. You know, I'll take uh, games on the Game Boy that have no drums, uh, like a Wario track that's just real ambient, you know, from uh, Six Golden Coins. It's just, you know, the cave song where it's just like twinkles and weird sounds. And I'll just put a beat to it, you know, whatever I'm feeling. So just whatever inspires me. I just try to get it out for everybody to get motivated. It definitely yeah, has I definitely will say, Sorry, I, on, Jim, I, I, I definitely went on a, a major binge, and to your point, the four years <laughs> of videos, like just, 
I don't know how long I spent listening to him, but I here, here's a question. So there's a part of me that's like, you've been doing that for so long. Yeah. How have you managed to like keep track of like, did I already do this song? Like, are you actively <laughs> keeping track of it? And when you're like coming up with new ones, you must have hit all your favorites at this point. So now you're probably like, hmm. Well, that's where? yeah. It's it's one of those things. Like I, I have a lot of favorites, right? Okay. And and like I've, I've always been in performing bands. I've been in a lot of punk bands. I've been in some metal bands, things like that. But I've always, when I'm home, playing, you know, or practicing on my own. I'm, I go to video game music. I'll play Paradiddles over Castlevania music. You know, like that's a video I made. And like my nephew watches that and he learns Paradiddles. You know, it's like, it's really cool to see stuff like that. And, um, but I don't, <laughs> I don't have a system. <laughs> I'm kind of like, that's a jam and I need to cover it. It's, it's <laughs> like, it's one of those. But um, I do get to the point, especially with like Persona songs or uh, Shin Megami Tensei especially silent hill also shin megami tensei and silent hill i have to go okay let me look through the videos did i do this mm -hmm. one because all of those are just you know they're just great they're just really good jams that i've definitely been like oh i want to do this one. Oh, i want to do that one but uh i still have a couple favorites i haven't done believe it or not mm -hmm. but you know you figure you got 52 weeks a year i'm four years deep just about so I know you, you're you're coming up. Uh, you're probably over 200 at this point. Yeah, what was cool? I was being a real dork at the beginning, like like maybe a year and a half, two years deep. I was kind of like counting the views, and it's like over 200,000 people have seen something I made, and it's like I performed live, and I performed in front of a big crowd before, or like we sold a bunch of CDs or streamed a bunch of music. But it's like I don't know. Social media gave me that like inspiration to like and i got so many people that i could like motivate or inspire to start playing drums or recommend songs to me you know things like that Pretty so cool. now, do you ever like yeah, uh yeah. you what like i'm sure like i play drums too now i mm -hmm. don't practice nearly enough but i'm, you, I'm sure you do <laughs> the same do. thing i do where you like you watch like you know you watch youtube drumming videos and you'll see <laughs> some interview or something like that where they mentioned a little thing do you try to like do a new exercise and just force that into a video any once in a while or do you just like because i just recently saw like a steve gadd interview with like uh yeah. rick beato and he's talking mm -hmm. about how he did paradiddles but started with the doubles first before going to the other yeah. thing and i was like oh i never tried that and then i tried yeah it like my brain. Do it in reverse and now yeah, I'm just yeah. like, oh. it's cool i i actually um i i've been looking at a couple different things because especially with doubles right because you find yourself warming up with doubles or mm -hmm. you know just like tapping around but i got a new bass drum pedal i got one of those trick pedals that's like um it's a big foot, so it's a long board, like something like a Lamb of God band would use. You know what I mean? To yeah. keep the keep the sixteenth notes going, and uh, that's one where I had to get creative with like exercises for my feet. Like I've always played double bass. If you listen to my stuff, it's a lot of accents. I don't do a lot of running for minutes, you know. But I also don't want to. I think I'm too old for blast beats at this point. Like <laughs> physically, I'm not talking about <laughs> genre wise. But there's some songs like that I'm doing with Rex Viper that um, with my old Iron Cobra double bass pedal, I do a gallop that's like a triplet gallop. And it's like, it's a 30 second note over and over and over and over. And it's like really impressive. Like I, I haven't done that before on a recording and it fits perfectly with the music. So that's one that like this new pedal, I have to relearn because it's a new feel. There's no chain. Like I don't get that, that hard spring back, mm -hmm. you know, or pull of the chain. It's just a direct drive pedal. So it's a totally different mentality where I got to learn those doubles again. Something as simple as doubles, you know, with my feet again, with a new piece of hardware. Do you, do you, uh, I actually heard with the direct drives, they're always like, oh yeah, you lose so much power with it, but you know, it makes your control so much better. You've been noticing mm -hmm. that at all or? A little bit, but not, not so much. Um, we played, like I recorded with both and I feel like the new direct drive is so much better because I can just creatively think of something it just happens where before i'd have to like figure out where is my foot going to be positioned mm -hmm. to get the most out of the spring but this is like I, I just think of you know exactly what i want to do and it just comes out so i'm a big fan of it like power wise i i think that's people have to play with their settings you know i feel like i've always been playing too loud i'm not the most dynamic drummer <laughs> Same. so uh, yeah i'm a it's i'm not uh you know animal or hulk like being the hulk behind the kit but at the same time like i could be more dynamic so i i find it's 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 got me thinking a lot more 
yeah. that's another thing with these videos. Like, I know you said you don't practice. Nobody practices enough. Like, that's the thing, right? Right. But, like, even this, like, this has gotten me to practice more than I've ever practiced. Because at least, you know, a couple times a week I'm sitting down to practice a song or, oh, I really want to see if this song works with this. Or I'll go down and just do it instead of just kind of writing stuff down. I'll just go, you know, record it real quick. So That's awesome. What console do you think you've been gravitating to the most? Is it like the love- Game Boy makes it more like freeform or maybe the Super NES just because of nostalgia? Yeah. It's a little of that, yeah. Um, it's, it's weird because, like I said, like Shin Megami Tensei. Or uh, Silent Hill, you know, so I'm in like PlayStation. I'm in this later era too. So it's like console cowboy just like stretched across everything. But uh, favorite for me is Game Boy. I love that. Like the the way the synthesizers sound on the Game Boy for me. I don't know. And it's mono, right? It's not stereo. So I'm not getting a lot of effects necessarily um, that you get with those other consoles. But for me, Game Boy, if I had to look at it, it's probably more I try to make sure there's a lot of Nintendo stuff in there because that's our fan base right like mm-hmm. you know like and it's it's not a bad thing like Shatterhand has one of the best soundtracks ever right <laughs> so like all those Natsume uh, games they have like such good driving soundtracks but um, yeah it's kind of like I do them for everybody but I'm also doing it more for myself so <laughs> there's probably more Game Boy out there than anything now, when you're recording, I you said obviously you're practicing the songs leading mm. up to making a video. On average, what do you think? How many takes are you doing for that? Because like you know, obviously Jim and I, we know that. Like when you're recording, you screw one thing up, you're like motherfucker, <laughs> restart. So like, how many times do you think you, on average you got to go do a run through when you're doing that? A lot of times, these if I hear a song, I'm already hearing it before I get downstairs. I'm hearing the drum part before I get down to my you know studio spot. So. Um, there's a lot of times where I'll sit down and I'm like, oh, that first one was really good. But I do, I, I hold myself to five. But I mean, also keep in mind, these are reels or YouTube shorts. So a lot of them I'm keeping to a minute. I recently said I was going to do longer videos, so I'm working that in. But, um, you know, those are still three to four minutes of repeating video game songs. Um, but mostly I keep them short. So... I hold myself accountable to five and then I use the best of those five, but I have all the cameras set up. You know, I have the one above me, the one in front. Um, it's more than enough. I was going to do one on my feet. Like a lot of people do. And I was like, you can see them. I'm not, I'm not going to overdo it. (laughs) Not yet. You, you, I mean, as I said, going down, like the binging of your videos, like I said, the production quality, you just hit hit on something I was going to talk about, like between the cameras, just the intros, outros. I mean, you, you put some serious time into it and, I guess my question is, so now, are you so, I mean, obviously being a drummer, you were probably already hearing the music like that, but are you at the point now when you play games, like, it's almost a curse, like, all you can think about is, like, the music, it and is. you're like... A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, that happens. It's like things like, even, um, I mean, I'm sure we'll get to it, but, like, I'm a sucker for this new Mortal Kombat game, and, like... It's a curse, right? Because I, I am addicted to fighting games, but especially 2D fighters. And that's the kind of thing like that. There's a song on that that's like, it is so good. And like in the second round of every match, it kicks up a notch. You can hear the orchestra like really swell up mm-hmm. and there's a drum beat. I can hear it. Like it's there. <laughs> like, so that's another one. Halo came out, that new Halo Infinite. And like the multiplayer has like, it is all drum forward. So there's just rocking drums. And they're actually there. Like, there's a guy behind a kit w- along with the orchestra going. Um, so it's 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 a curse. I hear it. Like, I, I hear it, and I'm like, I can do that. Or it's like, <laughs> I love this. I need to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. now, now, have you been um, – how long have you been a drummer? I picked it up, uh, believe it or not. Like, so when you go to middle school where we grew up, they, you go either to band or chorus. Like they made you do music, which was awesome, right? Like it's not a thing anymore. It was, it was something we had to make a choice. So I went to band. I was a fat kid with glasses when I was growing up. So they put me on the tuba. <laughs> oh my god, you were the Family Guy episode. Yeah, they. I I went home and like my mom and I went to the uh, music shop and I rented a sousaphone. I had it in my bedroom for a while, and it was like this isn't working. 
right? My <laughs> my grandmother was a drummer. My dad is a drummer. My uncle Fred is a drummer. My mom's mom and dad ran the majorettes in their town growing up. Everybody's a drummer. And I'm like, I really want to play drums. And they're like, yeah, you should be playing drums. <laughs> <laughs> so we went back and I, you know, it's, it's funny because it all kind of synced up at the same time. Like I said, it was a fat kid with glasses. I had that summer where I grew up. I lost a little bit of weight. I lost my glasses and got contacts and played drums. Became the coolest dude in middle school, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, I think that was like maybe seventh grade when I got that. I picked up drums. So I've been playing shit. <laughs> I don't even want to say how many years, right? Maybe between 28 and 30 years. I've been doing drums in some capacity. Yeah. And I've been playing live music since I was... 16 you know okay. so that's that's something that um that's something i always like love right it's hard to explain you guys can probably get this because you do have a crowd of people that watch you right like even if it's a virtual capacity or you know in person especially but like that's a feeling man and to be comfortable on stage or comfortable in front of a group of people is also a gift in itself so luckily i grew up performing in front of people you know be it without spoken word, just playing drums, but it made me comfortable on stage in, in any capacity now where I'm not like, certainly not sheepish. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of so, course not. It's cool. No, but that's awesome. So like starting in seventh grade, you know, uh, I think Jim and I, we had similar growing up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a low capacity of playing games to a certain point, but man, mm -hmm. by seventh grade, that's when I feel like a lot of kids were really developing their gaming you know yeah. knowledge yeah. so were you able to meld that at that time too or did game yeah. come a little bit later I, I played a lot of metal growing up so like the the i wouldn't say video game music was there yet but i was i was a nerd right i love comic books it was the 90s so we were all collecting comic book cards you know the marvel cards all that i went to the comic shop every single saturday and my comic shop sold used games so i'd I was always kind of a console behind. So Super Nintendo came out. I was buying used uh, Nintendo games, things like that. Then 1994 happened, and every, every one of the best games ever made came out. So there was, like, there's a lot there. A lot of good music in 94. A lot of good uh, a lot of good video games. I met my best friend Stevie. So him and I just, like, kind of fed off each other, you know, music. And he played guitar. So, yeah, that was a... Uh, Something like games weren't necessarily forward from a soundtrack perspective, but magazines, arcades, and home consoles. We were just constantly playing if we weren't playing music. Now, were you like Gemini as kids and you played Doom and you're like, I feel like I heard these songs before. <laughs> Whereas more than like any other game before, you're like, these sound really familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it was one of those like, it was absolutely like, I know these songs. I know what you did here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then we and then we searched it out, and I think it's Doom's fall, right? Because of that soundtrack being so good. Like then there was Destruction Derby that had like an awesome like metal soundtrack we played on the PC. Mm -hmm. Duke Nukem 3D, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, also had a great soundtrack. Um, and like we were teenagers, so it was like Duke Nukem's the coolest dude, unfortunately, ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, there's strippers in this game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm 14 and there's strippers. Like, yeah, exactly. This is the best game ever made. But uh, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, did we? It's funny because we've been talking Doom a lot lately, and it's you know of all the games that you you know they they were very smart. I know I know uh, mm -hmm. Romero made a comment about that before. He said my lawyer's really good and knows just the right amount of sample <laughs> before it's illegal. And it's one of those you're like, yeah, he he was on top of that. So. Yeah, he he earned his money. That's for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's funny. Now, Brad, I gotta ask. So mm -hmm. uh, obviously we've been with you in person. Yeah, but um. Are you are you being like us and drinking on this fine Monday night? And if so, what do you, what do you have in your can or glass or cup? I have an Einstock Ooh. Doppelbach. It's actually, believe it or not, I went into my fridge and it's all Christmas beers, so they're all like mm -hmm. ten to twelve percent. And I was like, I don't know, I'm going to be on a podcast. Maybe I shouldn't really, you know. <laughs> so I That's got the, the uh, Icelandic one, right? Yeah, yeah, it's got the Viking yeah. on it, but they put a little uh, Rudolph red nose on them. I but uh <laughs> and then my backup i got the usual uh miller light miller light yeah oh, huh? yeah that's the go-to so <laughs> of the big three that's your go-to oh yeah absolutely oh, nice yeah it's funny when the canadians come down like for rex viper 
um, when when James Ronald was was drinking, uh, that would be it. I'd get him a case, and he was like, "Oh, this is the American one." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're just sitting there going, "All right, Labatt, easy." Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jambers? What you drinking tonight? Well, keeping it a little bit local from the Evil Genius uh, Brewery, Stacy's Mom Citra IPA. So, mm, um, nice. this is a very, I mean. It's an IPA. You definitely get the citrus, but it's very nice and balanced. Like it isn't overly mm-hmm. boozy. It's barely hoppy at all, but it's not like you're drinking an orange juice either. Which I did have like a wit, like a citra wit over the weekend, and I was like, "Ah, oh, this is pretty good." And I'm like, "Man, this is like almost half orange juice in here." So it's nice <laughs> to have a little bit more of a balance to it too. Nice, nice. Yeah, I uh, I'm going with um, right from Delaware Dogfish Head, their Nordic Spring. It's new. It, this is part of their art label, so I, I don't know what that means. But um, this is their Hazy IPA. It's ale brewed with orange peels, juniper needles, and juniper berries, and made with Nordic strands of... Uh, they don't have the hop strand here. But hmm. um, it's a Hazy IPA. Here's the deal. I, Dogfish Head are the kings of writing shit on there that makes it sound like you're going to drink some majestic stuff, and you're like... Just tastes like a regular beer. But yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's 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 good. It's you know, it's it's a hazy boy like you would expect. Not yeah. a ton of lacing. Pretty pretty solid all around, but nothing crazy. I'll say that. What's the alcohol in that bad boy? Mine's seven point five percent, and this does not taste it. So this is a dangerous one. That's a dangerous. Yeah, that, yeah. Seven point five will sneak up on you. Six point five for this one. Um, yeah, and Jim. That now. Thank you for that goddamn. Because that song now is going to be stuck in my head, Stacy's mom. Yeah. Which, whatever the fuck ever happened to those guys? Like, uh, I think the lead singer's now. dead now from Fountains of Wayne. Is he really? Yeah, really? unfortunately. He died like a couple years ago. Mm. Had all kinds of health issues. They were actually like a really good band before that. So, like, that was their pop hit. But, like, they he was like a prolific songwriter. But there's stuff from the 90s that's just like good, alt, like near punk rock. It's like really good mm-hmm. shit that you would have never expected mm. to hear. Hmm. Huh. Mm, well,. well Rest in peace to that guy. Yeah. Are you guys uh, IPA guys? Would you say more? See, it's funny. I'll, yeah. Jim and I, when we started this page, we hated IPAs. We're like, mm-hmm. all it tastes like is fucking pine needles, right? Like, it, like yeah, why yeah. do people... And, and I think it was just more like we hated that everyone loved them so much and we couldn't understand it. There's definitely an appreciation there, but I know me personally, mm-hmm. um, I'm more of a, a stout beer especially like russian imperials or even what you have doppelbox i love yeah. those um i i love the like the darker lagers um, mm-hmm. ipas are fine and today was one of those days where i was like i've been drinking a lot of heavy dark beers for a while like i need something a little a little more citrusy so yeah. every so often it's a nice little break for me mm-hmm yeah, like, I'm definitely, like, I like my sours if I'm going, like, you know, want to get real flavorful. I also like porters. I've been drinking those a lot more lately. And mm. actually, like, I really like to be surprised by, like, a good old-fashioned just lager. And a lot of craft breweries don't do them because you actually have to, you know, try. So it isn't <laughs> like you can just fuck up a batch and be like, oh, this is this kind of IPA now. Nah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was recently, uh, two weeks ago, I was in New Orleans. And there is a, uh, shit, what the hell is that brewery's name? But I got there, and they had, like eight lagers on tap and i was like no fucking <laughs> shit so i just went through all those and they were all delicious i gotta look that up real quick but that's cool what about you what's your what's your kind of go-to brew at the house dude I, i'm loving these like we have a couple of like cideries around here and stuff okay so i've been i've been getting down on that but um i don't know i'm like i'm, I'm kind of turning into a pilsner guy like we go out on like the kayaks or whatever and it's like what's a good boat beer right like those mm-hmm. konas or something or like um just something super light. Yeah, you know, I love fruity stuff too. Like I don't care. It could be super sweet. I like that. Mm-hmm. But I can't do the sours, man. I give you a lot of credit. I could do <laughs> one. I could t- I could sip somebody else's, right? <laughs> yeah, it seems to be really a love it or hate it kind of thing with most beer drinkers. So yeah, no hate here on that. Yeah, yeah, I can't do it. My wife likes them, but I'm like, I've had one or two. It's like, eh, okay. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> You're like, I'm not sure what's happening in my mouth right now, but yeah, like. Yeah. Okay, it was an yeah. experience. It was it was a thing. Yeah, I got I had a sour. Yeah. <laughs> Even I'm getting to the point where I'm like I have two of them, and I'm like, all right, I think I'm good with Keystone for the rest of the night now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those now, porters, though, man, like those those dark beers are good and dangerous, right? Oh. You get the they're always high. 
You know, especially if you go out to like a uh, brewery and you're just like eating a pretzel, hanging out. And it's like you get this tiny glass. And it's like, well, why is it so small? And it's like, well, <laughs> that's because it's 14 percent. And it's like, oh, good. So she's driving. OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was at Warwick uh, Brewing this uh, yesterday for St. Patrick's Day. And they had, nice. you know, like a 12 percent porter out there, seven ounce glass. And it said no samples. Like That's the one that they don't give any freebies of. They're just like you're either committing to it or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. So you you mentioned um, my wife is all about meteries and like mm-hmm. um, she she found a company. I think it's called Greenfield or Greenmead. Um, hmm. She she got or Greenfell. They sent me a whole like line of their meteries, and there was like six or seven different ones. But they're nice. stronger ones. Oh man, they're delicious. But <laughs> they can be dangerous too because you're drinking them. You're like they go down smooth, you know, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you're like. Wow, they hit like a a little a little different. So. Yeah, especially if it's like in you know wine bottle size, and then all of a sudden you're looking and you're like, well, it's so close, I gotta finish it. It's like mm-hmm. one of those, you know. We don't be and rude. They're just too sweet. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be rude. Now, Brad, I guess the next question is: I know you're making. You, I mean, you can't have a ton of free time between making videos and everything else you got going on. But yeah, while when you do got time, what's your kind of go to game the past couple of weeks, or do you have a? Yeah a go-to right now uh like i said uh i'm a masochist so i've been holding on as tightly as i can to this mk1 <laughs> okay. did you get but all it, the dlc for it yeah i ended up buying the one with the statue before it came out because i'm a sucker like i collect mortal Kombat stuff so i have oh, like yeah. a i have a shrine in the basement with like all the posters from like mortal monday and like the home console release for mortal Kombat 2 I have Mortal Kombat 4 posters from the arcades, things like that. So, like, I'm kind of just collecting all that stuff. So, needless to say, when we got to hang out with actual Johnny Cage, like, I oh, lost man. my mind. So, it's like, <laughs> I tell Dan Piscina, happy birthday. And he says it back when it's my birthday. It's like, this is the coolest thing I could have ever happened <laughs> in my life. <laughs> You're like, babe, look. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, but I've been holding on. And it's like, it's funny because I don't know if you guys saw all the discourse for it where people were like, Mortal Kombat's dead. There's no player base. There's no this and there's no that. And it's kind of like, I was like, absolutely not. Like, this game will never die. And it's like, they killed my character. Now, like, the way I played Raiden just isn't working the way it used to. Like, they, yeah. they definitely nerfed my character where my style of play is just not working anymore. <laughs> so it's not as fun as it was before, but I am, like, I was, like, top 4,000 on the Xbox. So it's like, I'm doing all right. Like, I can hold my own, and now it's like, cool, I'm at 8,000. 8, <laughs> and, like, I, I have, like, a 14 loss streak. I don't know if I'm going to play this this weekend. So I might be revisiting Street Fighter for a little bit, but we'll see. <laughs> Which one? Uh, so if you're that into it, which one was like yeah. your Mortal Kombat that you were like, all right, this is the game I can, I'm ranking high in this one. Yeah. There was one uh, um, deception where uh, I was very good with Raiden. It was on the uh, it was on the GameCube, though. So it was one of those, like, I'm excellent on the GameCube. I would put the game too as hard as possible and just play until I could play against it, right? And then play until I could beat it. So it was one of those, like, preambles to, like, fighting, you know, locally with people. So I, I did that, and then I had a buddy who played it on PlayStation. He's like, oh, I'm so good. I'll destroy you. And I was like, oh, let's find out. And it was like that was the, oh, shit, I awoke something inside of me, and I want to fight against people all the time, right? <laughs> but um, that's one of them. I mean, I wouldn't say it like has my heart, but that's the one that I had a lot of fun with. I really liked Mortal Kombat 11, and that was the same discussion that's happening with this new Mortal Kombat where people were like, I don't really like it. It doesn't play like this or that. And it's like, well, I'm the best Cassie out here. And like, there's nobody else playing as Cassie. So like somebody fight me. <laughs> it seems like everyone's just bitch since 10. Like apparently, like even Pretty when much, 10 came yeah. out, they're like, they're annoyed how it's different from nine. But now every time a new one comes out, they're like, but it's not 10. It's not, it's bad. X is the best hits. one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it's, it's as soon as they introduced like uh, the movie characters, which were in nine, like Freddy was in nine yep. and then they still, then they did uh predator broke the game for a little while. Jason broke the game for a little while. And it seems like now with mortal Kombat one, it's doing the same thing. The guest characters break it for a month. So it's like mm-hmm. you either got to, you got to figure out how you're going to just get through it or, you know, take the, take the L every time you see this character. You're but, like, Oh uh, boy, Omni man again. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the character. I said it to my wife. I was like, I hate this. She's like, we well, can play as them. I was like, I could, but I, I, it's against principle at this point. Like I can't, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Because, <laughs> wait, yeah, so they did... Who's left? I, I think they said there's... Because they did Peacemaker, Omni-Man, and... Oh, um, the guy from The Boys. What's his name? Oh, uh, Homelander. Homelander. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm considering. But the voice actor's not doing it, which kind of sucks. Because John Cena sounds so good as Peacemaker. I know. It, it makes no sense. Like, I yeah. can't imagine Anthony Starr, or whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah. Is too busy to do the voice acting. For he he said he just wasn't even contacted or something in like yeah. one of those like Comic Con kind of interviews. And that's so silly. That stinks. Yeah. But yeah, there's him. Then there's Takeda, who was a huge character in X, mm-hmm. and he yep. was a lot of fun in X with those like Doc Ock kind of like you know like tentacle things. So he might be fun. For the amount of shit X got, we Jim and I said Cassie Cage was a great character. So good. He was great. Like. They were great, and then... The uh, the MK Kids, they called them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, what, Jackie, him, and... Uh, and and who, Cassie, yeah. Yeah, they they were all great, and it's funny, because I've played through one. I was, like, day one, purchase mm-hmm. it. You, to your point, there was something so disheartening about, like, Raiden being so... Mm. Eh, in that game, yeah, yeah, where yeah. I was like, <laughs> I'm going through the story, I'm like, the fuck? Like, I get it. They're rewriting the universe, but it... They took it away from him at the end. That's what sucked, right? Like, I don't want to yeah. necessarily spoil it, but it's like, he was the big character for 50% of the story, and then we're just like, eh, let's forget about it. There's other stuff going on. It's like, no, like, <laughs> you can't yeah, do that. It, it, it kind of just like, yeah, okay, don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm like, mm. And to your point, yeah, I, I used to love playing as Raiden, and in this mm-hmm. game... There's something very off about him. So I, I totally they just broke it that. too. Like his moves just got broken. So it's, I mean, top tier is still Raiden. So it's, it's me, you know, like I can improve and I'm that guy. Like I, I am always looking for ways to get better, you know, so I do have to get in the lab and figure it out. But it is one of those, like, I think the patch came out a week or two ago and I'm kind of like, mm. I don't know. Am I going to go back and use a uh, modern control Zangief and just be smiling all night and laughing at people? Like, <laughs> are you ever at tournaments seeing like the little local tournaments going on during these conventions and being like, I don't really need to practice these songs. I could just go out here on the floor and some ass right now. I practice a lot. Like when it comes to that, like I try to be as, as ready as possible. Right. So right. like I need to, but, this new Mortal Kombat is an addiction. I gotta, I gotta keep it in check. So, <laughs> <laughs> besides that, uh, complete opposite. I'm playing Pikmin Four again. I put it down and picked it back up, and it's so good. <laughs> that is such a different. <laughs> yeah, I found a, uh, I found a ring pop the other day, and that was like the treasure I picked up. And it's like this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, polar opposites. I heard from friends that was kind of like a almost like a perfect Pikmin from what you would want from the franchise. I've never played one it's outside so of like a Kmart kiosk for the first one for a little bit. Yeah, like yeah. that's a gaping hole I got to get to one day. But like, mm-hmm. what, was that live up to all the hype and for how long it had been since Pikmin three and all yeah. that stuff? Yeah, yeah, and three was really good. Um, I'm a Wii U guy. I have a Wii U kiosk and stuff. Like, so I played Pikmin three on that um, to completion. Really enjoyed it. And then four was just like, it's so much better. And it's like, how did they make it better? The other one was so good, you know. Um, but it is. It's the introduction of, like, you have, like, a dog <laughs> that you ride with the Pikmin. That's kind of neat. But the exploration is really cool. It's, like, very, very open. Where before it was, like, you kind of got this small area to kind of play in, the small sandbox, and then you move to the next sandbox. Now it's just like, okay, open up all the shortcuts, Dark Souls style. Like, you know, kick the ladder down over here, and then you can come back on the next day and do it quicker, you know. Mm, nice. Yeah. Now, now, what about you, Jambers? I know you took a, I'll call it a semi-hiatus with gaming. But yeah, cool. a bit of it. I actually didn't really talk as much about my games last week because I was too busy jerking off to Akira Toriyama. <laughs> so, uh, basically, I, I want to get back to <laughs> talking about, what do you call it, Bionic Commando and the Game Boy, because... Like, we did the review for the one on the NES, and we are both kind of meh on it with our first times playing it. But maybe that trained me enough, but I was playing on the Game Boy, and I was like, this feels so much better. It's, like, mm. snappier. The swinging physics just feel better. I almost want to say the level design's less, like, bullshitty. But it was still, like, challenging, but it was, like, less, like, oh, you have a pixel-wide thing you have to hit or else you're going to fall into a pit and die. So it just seemed, like, a lot more balanced and fair. I was, like, shocked by how much I enjoyed it. Because I was like, after the NES one, I was like, I don't think I'm going back to any more Bionic Commandos. And then I'm on the plane, and I'm like, eh, fuck it. Let me give it a shot. And I went through the whole game. So, like, that was a lot of nice. fun. 
Because we're doing this thing on our page where we're trying to beat franchises this year is like the gimmick of what we want to do. So, like, I'm trying to do Bionic Commando. I'm also trying to go through Rocket Knight, but I'm really hating Sparkster on the Genesis. So Mm -hmm. I'm struggling with that one. (laughs) Like, I'll pick it up, I'll get a little farther, hate it, and put it away for, like, two weeks. So Mm -hmm. I'm kind of in this little bit of a bind right now. But, yeah, no, uh, if you like Bionic Commando, definitely check out the Game Boy one. Don't sleep on that. But outside of that, I'm basically almost finally done setting up the game room. Like, I have to set up my couch that I ordered. So new game room will finally be done can take the game room tour video, all that stuff, and I can finally just sit down and enjoy the room instead of being like, all right, where am I putting these 4,000 just boxes of shit everywhere? Yep. <laughs> That's the uh, life of a collector, right? How, Not a hoarder. Dude, it's collector. Gotta be, it's got to be double bad for you being a drummer and a gamer because we yeah. all of us drummers, we all have just like piles of equipment that we buy, we play around with, and we're like, oh, this is really fun. And then we put it away after we turn in our 30s, and we're like, you know what? I don't need more than a four-piece. I don't need to go yeah, through all this hassle. Yeah. And now I have four four pieces. And a guy, I went to a practice spot over here. I was playing with somebody locally. And a guy came in and he's like, hey, nice to meet you, man. And he's like, I was like, I really like that drum set over there. And it was like, it was a, he called it Peacock is what the name of the, it's like a mosaic looking shell. Ooh. And I was like, I love it. Like it's, it's got every color under the rainbow on it and everything. He's like 300 bucks. So I'm about to have a fifth drum set. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you think he's in uh, past the wife? Yeah, I was oh, gonna say you're there's gonna the be like, you know got the sliding door around back you know and then oh yeah I didn't tell you about that you know <laughs> no I traded no, I traded the other one for this one but it, but it's right yeah, there yeah. no no that was the other one yeah yeah the <laughs> other other one yeah <laughs> nice yeah I um I've been I've been powering through Hollow Knight I said that's been a mm. great game to just so good it's such a weird game that like I'm using that as my turn off my brain game. Because mm-hmm. it's funny, like I was streaming it, and thanks to once again everyone hopped on the stream. I mean, it's not an easy game by any stretch, but mm-hmm. it is like I don't know. There's something still relaxing, even though at some points I'm getting my ass kicked. I'm like, I don't know. It, it's it's so so chill, and we talked about soundtracks. That one is yeah, is friggin' awesome. Um, it, it gives you just enough where you get to that point. You're like, do I even really want to backtrack to this point? And then you get the new ability, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, I have definitely to. do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the uh, water, there's, like, dripping in water sounds. and Yes. You know what I mean? So there's, like, that, just that relaxing, like, sitting in a sauna kind of yeah. atmosphere probably is keeping you chilled out. That's, that's why, exactly even though it's it super difficult. <laughs> it, 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 that's what, like, someone was watching me, like, one of the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, what, what's the what's the the girl night Scar- is scarlet or oh i forget a uh, hornet hornet yeah yeah, and, yeah and like yeah like i didn't even realize i was entering a boss fight with her and within like three mm. hits i was dead i was like son of a she bitch. is people, tough yeah people were like what the fuck was that and i was like yeah <laughs> i don't know i was like but let me try to level up a little bit before i get my ass kicked super chill game really fun um it's funny you mentioned brad duke nukem because mm-hmm. for my franchise i'm going through duke nukem's now i beat oh, one nice. two and 3d i start it forever and i said i started it i know it has the worst reputation but for mindless duke fun you're like it's actually not that bad it's not that so, bad <laughs> yeah so i'm like that'll be the game i finish off which will help me finish off that franchise yeah um i still made hit on some of the the spin-offs of that series mm-hmm. but still like i needed a break from just duke games and i went to hollow knight so that was my <laughs> my pikmin tier those are kind of extremes too yeah, yeah you went exactly. from like dark souls and a first person shooter like you know. <laughs> yeah just hopping all over the place but yeah no it's, it's it's been really fun and i did confirm with our buddy um todd howard who wants us to do what is it jim again called oh what is that uh it was a toilet in Wonderland or something like that. Uh, it's a horror RPG set. Yeah, it, it, it's goofy, but he's like, yeah, he's like, it's probably smart you streamed Hollow Knight and not that game. So <laughs> that that comes to us because it is a Patreon review for us to, to review. So I am going to – I'm polishing that off. Didn't mean to use polish or toilet, but I'm, I'm going to be finishing that off probably in the next week or two so Jim and I can get that review out. But um, Chambers, that leads me in. What uh, what questions do we have this week from our awesome patrons? Patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game. Where for as little as two bucks a month, you can ask a question that we will answer on each and every single one of these Power Hour podcasts. Uh, just one this week from good old Burn nice. Retinas. 
in your opinion, what is more fun to try? A no death run or a speed run in a game? Any game of your choice. Ooh, Brad, we'll let you start with that one. That's a good question. For me, speed run. No death, like, because you get to a point, like, if it happens at a point, right? It's It just feels so, I feel very defeated. Yeah. You know, if I can just run through, take hits, or, or die, reset, keep going, I'm all about that. Let's go for the speed run. See, I don't know if I've ever really attempted. I've talked about it before. There's something more important. Maybe it's the ADD in me where I'm like, mm. I'd rather watch a speed run because it's just done faster. <laughs> Whereas, like, if I watch a no death run, I'm like, it's a lot of boring ass, like, dodge, dodge, dodge. Mm-hmm. And it's impressive. Don't get me wrong. But I think a speed run, yeah, there is something that, that connects more with me where I'm like, I want to see it done and just how quick. And the level that some people go to these speed runs, they're like, actually, if you get hit in these three spots, it helps you move faster. And you're like, I don't know how much time you spent learning that, but dear God. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all for the speed runs versus the no death runs. Yeah, I think I'm more of a high score chaser than anything, but if I had to pick mm. between the two, I guess probably would be no death runs just because I like, I've really gotten mm. into shoot 'em ups a lot in the past couple of years after never playing them as a kid. Okay. And, there, yeah. and there's a lot of games where it's basically you have to not die because if you get powered down, it's just game over anyway. Like, you're not yeah. going to power back up enough, you're just done. So mm-hmm. I'm more likely to do that. I think like maybe like Sonic One was the closest I ever could have come to a speed run, but outside mm-hmm. of that, I never, I never put the time into any game just like that. Mm-hmm. I respect the hell out of it, but it's just like a level of concentration I do not have. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to even think like what would be a good no death. Well, I mean, Brad, for you, you could, you could like do a Mortal Kombat where you're like you don't lose a round. I've, like, I've, I've gotten my streak pretty high. I've gotten up to like 12 or 13, right? Yeah, <laughs> but the, but the um, I was thinking like we used to do like Dark Souls 1 and 2. I, I'm a Dark Souls 2 defender. So okay. I'll step back after this. Spicy, but... <laughs> spicy take from what I hear from that community. Yeah, yeah. But like um, my buddy Stevie had started trying to like go get a really powerful weapon and then just try to like push your way through the game. Not necessarily try to break the bounds, but try to get through the fights as fast as possible. So you're just like a little bit overpowered. So you're not destroying everything, but you're getting through them quick because you know the patterns, you know, that's super impressive to me watching people do that. That whole like Lobos with a ladle, you know, beat in Dark Souls. It's like, this is ridiculous, but Uh super impressive. And that's why it's his career, right? Like it is, it is a talent. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Like I said, the, the dedication to doing any of that, mm-hmm. it, it's like any of it, right? Like you watch it, you go, God damn. And there's always a part of you. I feel like, I don't know if you guys are the same when you watch that. There's that part of you that goes, could I do that? I like, have a, like, I have a problem with that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like, I don't know if it's the music thing where it's like, I can play that. I hear it. I can play it. Right. Like, it's like, give me 10 minutes with that song and I got you. Or it's like, you know, it. but I, it, I apply that to everything. It's like, Mm -hmm. uh, but it's happened, right? Like you overcome things. You guys are doing a podcast. You guys are doing videos. You're doing streaming. Those are all things you just did, right? That you weren't doing before. I was like, I'm going to record myself playing drums. I'm going to figure out how to do a video. I'm going to figure out how to do two videos. I'm going to figure out how to get it out to people, right? Like you have all these hurdles. That's like, I can definitely do it. So yeah, I can do a speed run. (laughs) It's what your mind tells you because you've done everything else up to this point. I know. It's like it's one of those. Uh, I hate to even use the word. Did you ever see the uh, the documentary Festival of Quarters? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so like that, seeing that, like there's a part of you that goes like, that would be very interesting. Like I've joked about like certain Call of Duties or something where I'm like, within the first couple weekends back when we could play, mm-hmm. I would always be within like top 100. Like, yeah, for yeah. Score wise, and I'm like. I could maintain this, but then you realize that's really just a time thing, right? It's not even a skill thing. It's like, you just need to do time. But I've thought about that before where it's like, I see some people like struggling with a video game or something. And I'm like, I think I could beat this. Mm -hmm. But then like, as you lose, you get more angry. You're like, I'm going to do it. (laughs) Now I have to do it. Now it's based off principle. I have to finish this. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jim. I know all about Brian saying that he can do a game when someone else says that they think that they're good at it and then they turn out not to be. I know all about this. All too well. Have have you played a little title called Tetris 99? Yes. 
I, uh, I, I post the day I got my first place. I pay, I posted it everywhere. I think it's one was my pin tweet <laughs> on Twitter for the longest time. That must be nice. So, so, so what you're saying is you were able to get first place, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, you're not owing 500 too. legitimately oh like God. I am. So Jim, have you gotten we... second? Cause second place hurts more. It does. And I've had a lot of second places. I've oh. had so many second places. Oh no. So, so, so you talk about that competitiveness, Brad, here's mm. the deal. Um, I, I've had a switch. I maybe have 12 games for it. Like I don't, I don't use it much. It was one okay. of those things where it was whatever. Yeah. But, but Jim has this thing when he starts playing a game, he goes into shit talk mode way faster <laughs> than his abilities can catch up. And he starts talking about Tetris 99. He's like, Oh, I place like 10th. I'm like, I'm the man, like very <laughs> early. And he keeps just podcast after podcast talking shit about it. And I was like, you keep talking about how you're great. I was like, I bet if I get this game, I'm going to get first before you. And I'm, I'm notoriously, I'm not that great at Tetris, but I was like, it's just a, a driving thing. So I got the game and now I'm 15 or 20 first places. Wow. <laughs> and they were all very casually done. And he's like, it's only because you're doing them at certain times. So he's taking a shit break at work. Times. And he's just like, yeah, I got another win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. So, yeah, I, I get it. When you watch somebody else do it, there there is a very large competitiveness in me where I'm like, I think I can. I think I could probably do this. So, yeah, I got, yeah, I, 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 I got to fight that. Like, you got to fight that competitiveness sometimes. Like, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, the time commitment. Like, even us having this conversation, my mind goes, "What game could I know, Death or Speed?" Ride? Well, that's like, I'm doing that too, right? Like, you're creating a list in your head. Like, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not healthy, but it's what we do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, burned. Thank you. That is a great question. I love that, bud. That was yep. a good question. So once again, thank you to everyone out there for all the support. Make sure to head on over to the Patreon. Get those questions in. We do them weekly. And also check out the other tiers for game review requests, movie review requests, bonus episodes. We actually do have another game request, Brian. Uh, good old Spaghetti coming in with Postal 2. And they want us to do the Apocalypse Weekend expansion with it. So I remember the Postal games blowing my ass away when I was like, what, 8th grade when they came out? And we're like, yeah, this really. game's so hardcore. They did so much cursing. It's so much blood. <sighs> <laughs> I, I actually, so when I did that one video for like cheap games on Steam, I actually, I did beat that and I got that version. Um, so yeah, Jim, enjoy it. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's, it's no, no, it's it just, it's just crazy. It's like take South Park humor to an extreme hmm. and make it an FPS, but super inappropriate. So it's right up our alley with humor, but it's. It, 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 there's a point to the mindlessness of it where you're like, okay. But no, I, I, I it's going to be an interesting review. So, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> right, you have fun editing that video. <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you, guys. Always, always appreciate all the support. Now, uh, now, Brad, so we were, you know, we've been talking about various beers and uh one of the things whenever we see an interesting collab or beer flavor that comes out we always got to talk about it the latest one is coming to us uh out of the collab between tombstone brewing and new belgium which i'm sure if you if anyone drinks craft beer you've heard of voodoo ranger there's a gazillion different types of it but this one particular uh um brew you know this collaboration is a pizza flavored beer, which is almost fifty bucks for a four pack. Oh jeez, I didn't read that part. <laughs> yeah. So damn. Unless you live in Colorado expensive. and you want to try it, you got to get that yeah. shipped in. You're gonna be paying. Yeah. Here's the deal. What is the weirdest flavored beer you've actually tried? Like, what's a flavor? Like, I know you said you like you'll try anything. It doesn't matter if it's fruit. But have you tried one and went? This is a really weird ass flavor combination. <clears throat> I had um, not a beer, but remember, like Bud Light made those seltzers a year ago. They had like an mm-hmm. eggnog one that was real, real weird. Oh god! <laughs> oh, but how I like did that taste. I like eggnog, so nutmeg was cool, but like not as a bubbly drink. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's like you're trying to get like a creamy flavor mixed with bubbles. That's... Yeah, it's just, you know. 
<laughs> I can't think of anything super weird, and maybe that's because I'm not as adventurous as I used to be. You know, now I, now I feel kind of down about it. <laughs> well, I mean, Jim and I have talked about this, so there, there's obviously been there's been tons of like oyster stouts. That's a that's a oh yeah one. yeah. Um, you know, Jim infamously very early on in the page threw up by having the mm. ghost face killer ghost pepper flavored beer because it was oh, legit the spiciest beer in the world did not um, did not mix well with stella either we yeah. killed off a, we cut off like what a six pack each of stella and they were like oh let's try the uh the ghost pepper beer that's a good idea yeah but this is one where i go all right so a pizza flavor now they're not the first one the first one i remember was this one called mama mia and <laughs> um they try to basically, yeah, mix flavors of spices that you would find in beer, like oregano and things like that. Um, what it, what's always interesting is they try to hit on the acidity of, like, tomato. The tangy tomato. Yeah, like, Ugh. <laughs> so from what I've read, people talking about this, that's the thing is, like, how do you hit on that flavor without really fucking up the beer? Mm-hmm. It's an interesting concept. We've seen, like I said, a lot of different weird flavors. But this is one where I go, okay, as Jim said, if you live in Colorado, it's only 15 bucks for a four-pack. But if you're outside, it's 50 So if you were to see, a, like, a four-pack of this, it, would that even spark your interest at all to even try for, like, 15 20 bucks, let's say? I'd bring it to a party. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be like, hey, let's try this. It'd be a yeah. good time. The problem is you need, like, a, a pack of Tums with it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all I could think is the heartburn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's weird how they it's always try to, like, recreate, like, the actual flavor and not, like, because, like, say you have, like, pizza Pringles and you're like, hmm, like, you know, mm-hmm. you know that flavor profile when it's, like, that fake pizza, like, kind of dust thing. It's like, why doesn't anyone just take that and just mix it in almost like an old bay beer but you know with yeah, that yeah. like little salty kind of profile instead of trying to kill you with the acidity or the tomato or any of that bull crap where mm-hmm. they try like it's almost like thick and you're like oh that's the cheese it's like no now it tastes like butt pipe like what are you doing here <laughs> <laughs> yeah what about you jambers i mean when you read this were you like this is something you want to try or no oh, definitely try it but not for 50 goddamn dollars yeah not 50 bucks <laughs> it, it, it's 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 just too much. If any of our loving fans in the Colorado area would want us to try it, though, I mean. Now, Jim, I'm going to warn you. box is below. Uh, I, did, I did speak to someone on Twitch. I think it was actually Todd Howard, um, who may be sending me a 2008 or 2009 dissident. Really? Oh. Yeah, because the story he works at is just, like, getting rid of them. And I was hmm. like. I was like, I will gladly take that off your hands. I will buy so. all of them off him. The Dissonant yeah. was like the first craft beer that I like fell in love with back in what 2013 or something when we were doing the page early on. So mm-hmm. like, it's like you know a cherry barrel aged sour kind of thing like that. But I drank that and it was just like it was like Popeye with spinach the first time. I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and like you never find it anymore because like Duchette's is out of Portland. They almost never send shit this way. So I don't mm-hmm. even know how we got it the first couple times. You have to find that like right kind of craft store that just like just gets shit from everywhere, basically. Yeah, which are far like you don't find a lot of them. You know, a lot of them have been yeah. closing too. Like there was like a big yeah. surge in all these little craft stores coming up, and like one by one, they're all just kind of like dying out. It's because people are still four years later trying to drop that COVID weight. So, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Brad, so what you're saying though is, once Jim and I get this at the next Magfest or convention, we see. Oh we'll, yeah, we'll no bring doubt. Some pizza beer and we'll try it. <laughs> if you guys bring it, I'll drink it. <laughs> it's one of those things. I was talking. I was talking to my wife about it earlier. Like, if they made a beer that's perfect with pizza, like if somebody sold something like that, I'd be like, yes, I need to try that. Right, because exactly. like we eat pizza all the time. Like, let's figure it out. Let's get the best pilsner. It just pairs perfectly. Like, some people try to sell it just with the artwork that way, but like, yeah, no, the the flavor, the flavor, have to be just right. and it's going to be specifically tombstone. Like, I'm a Red Baron guy, so like <laughs> tombstones all right, but like, yeah. no Red Baron, yeah, that's... yeah. I, I don't know if it's going to even be like that. Wouldn't be my first collab. Chase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, companies trying this. We've seen, I mean, shit, the Mortal Kombat. You talk about collectors. Did mm-hmm. you get the Mortal Kombat beers back in the day when they collabed? No, but I've seen them. Yeah, they looked really cool. They were shockingly they were, good, too. 
They were oh, yeah. really good. Like I think between Jim and I, we got them all, and it was uh, it was four ten. Um, pretty damn solid selection. But it's one of those mm-hmm. you talk about FOMO, man. Beer, the yeah. beer world is the worst because they have limited time. Like can only get it this month or something. It's, I mean, it's food, right? So it yeah. can't. It literally is only a limited time. Exactly. Yeah. And you're like, fuck, can't you just keep releasing it? And they're like, nope. You're like, son of <laughs> Gotta a move bitch. on. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Gamers bitching about limited run games. They don't even know. They don't know what <laughs> Chip, stop supporting them. He's so Look, bitch. I still complain about them too, but there's worse. <laughs> <sighs> well, Jambers, uh, you kind of hit on something here because we talked about this before, and uh, Sony is having one hell of a friggin' time with their PSVR 2s. We said that seems like a, a very unnecessary accessory for the PS5, which still doing numbers, all well and good, but they were selling not so great as of the last time we covered this. And then finally, they're like, we got to take a little bit of a pause uh, on production because we have mm. such a backlog of unsold inventory. And this goes back to what we said multiple times. Like, yeah, VR is advanced. And we even played it from our... <clears throat> uh, I guess brother-in-law yeah brother-in-law and 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 it's really cool technology's there i don't know what the ps vr2 is like mm-hmm. but really i feel like that market still is like for 550 bucks on top of a 600 hundred dollar console are you really gonna drop that kind of money for a vr experience i don't think people are there yet I don't think there's a game like I mean, and and maybe it's because I'm not in that circle, right? Like there's Beat Saber and things like that, but is there a game driving people now to get a to get the two? No, like wow. Resident Evil Four came out how long ago, and that's the only one that I'd be like, yeah, I want to see what it's like to suplex somebody in VR, right? But like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, like, I think I think you're right. Like there there hasn't yet been a VR game where. There, there's there's the kitschy ones like you're saying like Beat Saber. Mm-hmm. There, there was a bar fight ones. There was like all these like kind of goofy games that oh try it out. But well, that bar fight that... game though, I saw a video today of that. Yeah, dude, you can dance with people and fight like all at the same time. It it's looks like so the ridiculous. best game ever. <laughs> <laughs> and now, like... if it was a if it was a hundred dollar system that they were liquidating like a like a you know <laughs> oh like, yeah It'd like a virtual player. boy yeah I'd buy that but. Uh... But, but, like, you know, to your point, every major console, every major thing that's been successful has had a game, like, you have to try it on this. Mm-hmm. And I just – and the problem is, is how many different VRs are there now? There's PlayStation, Oculus. And there's no um, there's no bridge, right? Like, if you're meta, you log in here and you just have these. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's no – you bought it here, so you have it here. Like, it's a Game Boy Game Gear situation. You don't have Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. on both. <laughs> It's weird, like, all these other ones are, like, just as powerful, seemingly, and they're a lot less expensive, and they come with a lot more stuff. And, mm-hmm. yeah, to your point, like, do you, like we're all on social media and stuff. When's the last time you saw an ad for anything on the PSVR 2? It's not like they're pushing a damn thing, either. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anything. But is that because it's, uh, am I on Facebook and not noticing? So that's meta, right? Instagram is meta, also. Mm. Is true. But you would only see it on X, if anything. And X is ridiculous now. So <laughs> Yeah, good luck seeing anything on there. You're not going to yeah. see anything you want to see on there. You'll X. get a lot of ads for Timu stuff, I think. Yeah. And that's about it. But. I mean, I guess when I see this, I go, what if if you were going to project out, like what gaming <clears throat> generation is there going to be where it's like the the console just comes with a VR set? Where where it's standard. If they really want to make that gap Maybe instead of consoles being five or six hundred, they're seven hundred standard. Or even if there was an addition that came with it, and then, yeah, it's an extra hundred or two. That that every game is compatible at that point. Like mm-hmm. that's the only way I see this technology. Yeah, being if everything used. is compatible, I mean, but compatibility equals what, right? Like you can put goggles on with with screens and play anything, you know. Exactly. But but is that a VR experience? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got to come down there's, to... There's, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, there's atmospheric VR in a way, though. Like, you don't have to be standing up, walking around, or swinging your arms. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, like, Tetris Effect almost had that. If you had, the like, really good headphones and turned that Dolby on, like, Tetris Effect was insane. Like, that was an emotional game. But I don't... 
I don't know. I don't I don't even see that in like a VR being any different than me playing it on my PC. So Yeah. Yeah, I played yeah, it on I Switch and I was like, this is really cool, but I'm also like I'm not seeing the like that real all encompassing thing that like everyone was like going crazy for it. I'm like, I think that's mm-hmm. what I need to experience in VR to really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. But again, that was what, 2018? And that was like one of the Super last Super early. One of the know, last like... big games on VR that people really talked about. So again, yeah. it's been like five, six years too. And mm-hmm. you can see COVID and supply chain and blah, 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 blah. But there's been like, what, 15,000 games released in that time? Like one couldn't have been good on VR? <laughs> yeah, there's got to be. That's the problem. Like I said, there's no uh, there's no run out and get it now game that I can think of. No. Yeah, what Brad said, not enough porn on the PSVR 2. I yeah, agree. like, like <laughs> those panty chaser games, man. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> I'm just saying, untapped markets are there. But that's what the Switch is for. Like, if you go into the Switch, the eShop, that's all it is anyway. Don't oh, I know it. Can I tell you guys something, though? Of course. And this is, this is because I listen to a video game podcast. It's called KVGM. They play absolute jams for video game music, if you ever want to hear it. But... A lot of the things that come from that are like visual novels in Japan or a lot of like love games. Mm -hmm. Like, so the the games have incredible soundtracks, but you cannot be seen or nobody can know that you even know what half of these titles are. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, I don't know what this is. (laughs) Yeah, I have no idea how this guy here. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Dating Sims, what? I haven't been playing him since Newgrounds in 2003. What are you talking about? So, I mean, I'm not shocked when we first la- when we last talked about the PSVR two that there was bad projections for them. Mm-hmm. This just con- confirms it. I'm curious how long they're going to pause production for and what that backlog really looks like. Uh, I like how the solution they- is stop making them instead of hey, let's have a sale because they still haven't yeah, let, let the prices. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what sucks. And and like I said, if it was a hundred bucks, uh, there's a good portion of us that would buy it. You know, that's a, that's it, yeah. that's a massive number, right? Let's pre- let's go fifty percent, which is still massive, right? Like, right, yeah. but like five fifty, isn't it? Five fifty, six hundred. Yeah, five fifty. Like, like oh it's insane. Like yeah. if if it was, yeah, bring it down to one fifty, even two hundred. Then that I might flirt with the idea of like do half the PlayStation Five cost, right? Yeah. Like do three hundred bucks, like do something, something. But they're yeah, they're not going to move. They're just going to be discounted at some point. <sighs> So, yeah, we'll just wait to get them secondhand and be like, oh, these actually were pretty cool. Just like the PS TV. Like, the PlayStation TV was one of those things where you could play Vita games on it and you could stream your PlayStation 4 to it. Nobody had one. Then when they liquidated them for 30 bucks, everybody's like, wow, this thing is awesome. Oh, and you can put ROMs on it. So then it was like, oh, now they're worth four hundred dollars. Wait, uh-huh. what? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Secondary market's gonna be crazy for this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll see. I, I'm sure we'll have a follow up at some point when they decide to resume, or like Jim said, mm. when they do a fire sale. I don't know. We'll see either way. Mm-hmm. But Jamers, uh, something that I'm personally excited <clears throat> for because of the one of the candidates, and I'm sure you can guess which one. Uh, a new update for the video game Hall of Fame. The voting is out right now for the player's choice ballot. And uh, Jim, why don't you read off the titles here? Yep. So we always love going through these every single year. It's a fun little discussion piece. And this year they're doing it a little different because half of the voting will be fan voting and half will be from their committee. So you really kind of have a say of what gets in this year. But the list is Asteroids, Elite, Guitar Hero, Metroid, Mist, Neopets, Resident Evil, Sim City, Toki Meki Memorial, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Ultima, and You Don't Know Jack. That's a hard list. That's a really, really good list. I mean, I don't know shit it, about what that, that Toki Meki is, but... I unfortunately don't either. But everything else is top tier, right? Even You Don't Know Jack, like, it, it's created a genre. Dude, that was you know? the... Like, PC party game and like from yeah. what, the, all the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. So I think like everyone, it, people who had like the most jack shit computer. Well, okay, Jack. Uh huh. But like <laughs> even the worst computer in the world, you could play. You don't know Jack, so everyone fucking had it. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, this is the easiest no brainer. Uh, anyone mm-hmm. who knows me knows horror is my thing. Resident Evil is my thing. Not only reaffirm my love of video game, even though I was always a gamer, like to actually have that and actually feel like horror 
and you talk mm. about creating a genre even though i know you had yeah. games before it it was inspired by sweet home but still like i don't know resident evil to me stands out it's funny because i feel like for all the years we've been talking about the video game hall of fame i feel like mist is always floating around there and i'm like i get it but like when you put it up against some of these other titles i'm kind of like meh i'm actually the one i'm shocked that's not already in there is asteroids I don't know how that yeah, has been so early. Yeah. yeah, like it's one of those where I'm always like, they throw some goofy shit in there sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, Resident Evil, I'm like, you just got to get that in there already. And Asteroids then, was know, big, but it wasn't like Space Invaders or Pac Man big, though. It was always like a 1A kind of deal. It's, I mean, it's still like a hugely popular title from the time, but mm-hmm. it's so they yeah. were like missed how like Mist was like, you know, the big computer game from the early 90s, but... These are game changers, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like the ones you mentioned and, and Mist. Those are game changers. Asteroids. Mm. It's hard, man. It, like, even just picking... It says pick three, right? They're going to vote on the top three. It's like, I, I can't even pick three because there's so many things. I mean, Guitar Hero, right? It was a phenomenon. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, we yeah. were grown-ass men with plastic toys <laughs> like in the like everybody's apartment had a full band set and uh, we would all just like go over and party like yep i wasted and then six years was... of my life playing that almost exclusively <laughs> <laughs> i got really good at the aerosmith one on on we because my mom loved aerosmith i got it for her <laughs> and i hundred percented it <laughs> But uh, I mean, there's a there's a lot. There, I mean, man. Sim City. I, I I've said the Sim games. I get the way I look at it is like once you open the door for any of these, like Sim City mm-hmm. will open the door for Sims and every everything else that follows. Resident Evil will open the door for all the Resident Evils, Silent Hills, and horror games that follows. Mm-hmm. Um, Metroid. I'm actually that's another one where I go. I, I I'm shocked at. All these are like you know they're gonna get in there. So there, yeah. there's also part of me like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, of course. Like, mm-hmm. I think people today can't really understand how big skating was. Like, yeah, growing up, especially '80s and '90s, mm-hmm. and how big that game is. So I can understand that one, like where you had to be there. Yeah, but even fucking Neopets for like the casual like yeah, online yeah. like for being like an online world kind of game thing. Like, that was doing something that no thing else was doing back then. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, my three would be Resident Evil, SimCity, and Guitar Hero. I don't want to pick a three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, Resident Evil's on my list. Like, there's no doubt about that because I had, like, Resident Evil 4 was an experience, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, 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 it turned a corner for so much for all of us as players at home being like, it was the first time I had surround sound as an adult too. Like, you know, like when it came out, it was like, you know, what's that? 2004, 2005, something like that. Oh, by the way, Resident Evil five is 15 years old. If you want to feel old. Yeah. So, um, I think that's either, either today or yesterday. Yeah. Um, before <laughs> like it turned a corner right there. Like that changed gaming, like other games reconsidered what they were doing because of that game. The over so, the shoulder camera, that action, yeah. that whole style, just like resident evil mm-hmm. reinvented tank controls and horror mm-hmm. resident evil four. As much as I, I hate what it did to resident evil, what it did to gaming is yeah. unprecedented for the action genre for every like yeah it completely yeah. shifted off i'm gonna go mist for one of mine okay all right and then uh A gentleman's choice and then <laughs> guitar hero as a musician that's it <laughs> my man. those are my three yeah i'm probably going guitar hero metroid and Shit. metroid i'm so i'm so Jim, torn don't between... fuck this up <laughs> I'm so torn between Resident Evil and Sim City, though. But I'm, I'm, go, I'm going to go Resi. I'm going to yeah. go Resi. It's fine. There I'm going Resi. Put the pitchfork away. But God, so <laughs> many of them are so like Sim City is like, like that one that like you could take any of them out for me and put it in there and I'd be like, all right, I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Ultima's big too. I mean, Ultima is is massive, and Ultima inspired a ton of stuff too. So. I mean, that basically invented like Western and computer RPGs. So yeah, that's yeah, probably exactly. one of the most important games on the list, really overall. That that's because it was just like under where I was scrolling, so I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not changing my list, but yeah. Ultima, that's on my next vote. <laughs> and that's and that's, that's one thing, too like, that like a lot of kids aren't going to know about these days either like that's it's unfortunately a relic of the past but god damn was that an important game yeah 
and as we said, everything on this list, it's just a matter of when will it get on. So if it doesn't get on mm-hmm. this year, they'll just so. pass over to the next year. But then that's going to be the problem, right? Next year it'll be like something like, like you know, they're going to just throw something on there. You're going to be like, oh, shit, well, that's pretty mm-hmm. good too. You know? like Yeah, yeah. But there will come a – there's definitely, I feel like, going to be an easy plateau where you're like, okay, I think you've got enough because – I, well, I know we talked about it last year, but like, there hasn't been that many years of this. I don't mm-hmm. think it's only been a couple. Maybe this five or six or something. Yeah, yeah, it's still still pretty pretty new. Pretty early on, but yeah, no, it's it's interesting. So as always, we want to hear what you guys think. What are your three choices? Um, as long as Resident Evil's in there, and I can't wait to hear <laughs> two plus Resident Evil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Mon- Monster Hunter should be on this list eventually. Oh. Right, like Monster yeah. Hunter is something that like I've been playing for a good portion of my life, <laughs> mm-hmm. just like Resident Evil, you know, and yeah. Street Fighter, and okay, all this is Capcom. <laughs> now, as you 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 mentioned you're a big Souls fan. Are oh they, yeah, you know, do they start with the first or do they yes. throw? I mean, and that's that's and again that comes to the age thing, right? Like maybe somebody would go to something earlier. Uh, like a Kingsfield, like that I wouldn't because I didn't play it, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. No. Yeah, they're gonna. You don't just jump to Elden Ring. Like, there's yeah, a Bloodborne yeah. in there. You gotta, Basically. you gotta. Let's talk about Bloodborne. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm the biggest Bloodborne of the From Soft games. I'm like Bloodborne is where it's, it's at. so good. Yeah. It's the reason I have a PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's. It got me to. It got me to have make sure we always have that in our house. So that I can play Bloodborne. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're gonna speed run and no no death. Mm. <laughs> with a Listen, character got, with no armor while naked, basically. Y- yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got my what is it, a platinum trophy? I got that. True. That's that I'll 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 sit on that. That's Good all I got. <laughs> I beat that was one of those games when I finally beat it. I was like, there's a few things I could go back into, but I was like, oh, I, I need a I need a sabbatical from that shit. Like, this, is, <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> it's it's that love when you when you get to the end of a game and you're like, it was so close. I can definitely get something else. And you know that takes forty hours. Yeah. Right. Like to complete. Um, yeah. I did was, those. What? What is there? Is it three endings for that? Something like that. Yeah. I, I did the save point. Yeah. I went back. I was like the bad one. You, say, you save scummed it. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, let me, let me just see what these are about. And I remember, I forget which one was the really annoying one to get, but I was like, mm-hmm. whatever, like that. You third, had to, you had to do an extra fight. Yeah. To get that that final, final, yeah. final, final form of the thing. Yeah. Yep, I was yep. like, Oh God. <laughs> I was like, is this worth it? <laughs> but yeah, man, that game made hit hard. So. Baldur's Gate is giving me that. Is it? Like, yeah, where it's like, I could have made a different choice. And it's one of those, like, I save scum. I don't care. Oh, like, yeah. I'll, I'll save, I'll roll and not like my roll. So whatever. And I'll, I'll just reload. <laughs> but um, it's one of those, like, sometimes you have to make a choice and you can't go back. And Baldur's Gate is giving me that, like, itch where I'm like, I know it was six hours ago, but, but... maybe I'll, I'll, I'll remember for the next replay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dude, well, I, I feel like the, the game that defined that for Gemini and maybe a lot of people was, you know, once Fallout started doing their like oh, yeah. three or four different endings and you're like, at this point, you better not turn around. Like, there's something I like about that because you're like, do I really need to put another 200 hours every time I want to play this game? Mm, yeah. Oh, I saved scum the fuck out of, uh, what do you call it, New Vegas. Mm. I was like, all right, oh, yeah. this seems like an MPS oh, yeah, right here. Let me ends. just make about six save files so I can see everything. Yeah, the, the Kaisar ending. Uh, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we all went to that same, uh, was it the, the like Stone Canyon where it's all death claws? And you're like, oh, yeah. Maybe I can go through <laughs> here. I think I'm powered up enough. And after like 10 fat boys, you're like, it's still not enough. Fuck this. It's not <laughs> enough. Yeah. It's those mosquitoes. That's the problem. Oh, those oh, big those ass were the worst. I was like praying for death claws instead of those things. (laughs) They were probably the most annoying enemy in that game. Too fast. Yeah. And then they did the nice thing of like, if you made a left instead of a right, as soon as you started the game, it's like, ah, what's this moth thing? And I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Uh Yeah. Get you early. (laughs) So yeah, you guys, you let us know what you think below, but that will take us to the final topic. And, uh, Mm. I chose this one specific, Brad, for you. 
knowing that you are a fan of 2D fighters. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and one of the things we do here is we compare, you know, which is better between two themes. And I the try music. to... Music, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to really compare to what I know I feel are iconic, and I know for sure you've definitely covered a one song okay. um, semi-recently. And the other one, I think, is just as iconic. So today, what we're going to look at is the main theme from Killer Instinct and mm. MK3. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> this is tough, right? And I think I, I think I literally just posted a, like a meme too about it, where it's like if I walk into an arcade and I can hear that Killer Instinct music coming uh-huh. from the back. <laughs> so so <sighs> what we're gonna do? We'll first we'll listen to Killer Instinct and be right back. All right, so now we're going to check out MK3's theme right now. So I know we've said this about many which is betters, but I know me personally, this is a tough son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> both from nostalgia as a kid love the shit out of both these games I, I, but you know what i wanted to have something that was competitive so brad you're the guest and this i know you love both of these this is too tough right like i said 2d <laughs> fighters too right i grew up with both of these and i have incredible memories with both of these so let me start with killer instinct killer instinct could be the first cd i ever owned because it came with the game, right? It came with the Super Nintendo game. So I played a lot of this album. This song, like I've covered multiple songs on this. Like I play these just for fun. My wife and I drive around town listening to Killer Instinct soundtracks. Like <laughs> old and new. <laughs> mm-hmm. MK3, like there was an arcade across the street from our high school. I'd say arcade, but they had like maybe three or four machines. And Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 was one of them. So me and my buddy, like every day after school, we would not eat lunch and just use our lunch money and just play because we could just live on a quarter, right? And then just like play nonstop. <sighs> this is tough. This is real tough. <laughs> <laughs> Killer Instinct. Uh, there's a lot of repetition in Mortal Kombat soundtrack, right? Like they are, especially something like a character select song, right? It's a quick hit. It has to be. Yeah. You're only going to hear it for so long. I'm going Killer Instinct. It's got that car. It's got the sick guitar. It's got that like clang in it. Mm-hmm. And it's in one of our new Rex Viper songs. So I have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> it's that too. It's it's that. It's the instinct. It's in there. Um, uh, I, I can't think of anything bad to say about the Killer Instinct soundtrack. Yeah. It's but, but I had a podcast, like I said, me and my buddy did a podcast in a YouTube channel and it was called Yo Check This Out. And it was because of the Yo Check This Out music, that that song from Killer Instinct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's an easy answer for me in terms of uh, you just captured most of my feelings for it all. I will say mm-hmm. like MK3 was the first notoriously Mortal Kombat. I've said many times it dwarfs any other fighting game. Um, mm. for me as a kid i had mk3 for a super nes uh i don't know if i opted for ultimate i know i played it as a kid but then i got trilogy and they kind of maintained the same soundtrack but updated mm-hmm. a little bit uh, like uh, when it comes to the best soundtrack in the franchise i kind of think mk3 has it on lockdown along with trilogy and even with all that being said killer instinct the fact the cd came with it i still to this day like I listen to shit on YouTube, but I don't have CDs, vinyls, anything of other game soundtracks. And that one I played the shit out to a point where like, I wore out the disc. Yeah. So it's got to be Killer Instinct. I've said it before. I think that has to be the greatest fighting game theme, period. Like, I don't know if there's anything I can argue would even, for me, that would be to, as far as a fighting game. Other games, we can debate that. But for me, 
that killer instinct once a guitar hits and like the slow build up into it oh it's good it, build up yeah yeah it, it just hits it so <clears throat> yeah me it's killer instinct all the way yeah i think this is almost unfair because like killer instincts like a fully full-fledged song and the character select screens like a 15 yeah. second loop it's a banger of a loop don't get me wrong it's like a perfect mm-hmm. character select screen song but yeah you kind of have to give it to killer instinct even though I have, like, no nostalgia at all for Killer Instinct for the most part. And, like, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, that was, like, the arcade game I would play when we'd go to, like, the skating rink. And funny for me being a drummer, but I have no coordination when it comes to skating. I also get the fat kid who just be, like, <laughs> out and down. Like, Peter Griffin, like, instant, like, just face planning every time. So I'll just stay by the arcade machines the entire time, anytime we went to those things. Nice. So I played a lot of Mortal Kombat 3, but, yeah, I still got to give it to KI. Come on now. No, Brad, I do have a question. So, I saw your eyebrow raise when I said that Killer Instinct is the best fighting game theme. So, I know there's there's something in your mind that goes, what would be a good competitor? Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Ah! Uh, Take you for a yes. ride. Character select screen. No! <laughs> that goddamn song. Man oh. of taste. <laughs> I put that right there with the no mercy dick diggity dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a jam too. Maybe I should cover that. <laughs> There's a witch is better for the most out of place song in any fucking game ever, while still being a fucking jam. Both God. of them, yeah. Yeah, man. There's that soundtrack in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is a soundtrack that's on another level, but that is comparable to a Killer Instinct. Like if you did full albums, Ooh. full album Killer Instinct, full album album MVC2, like there's some big stuff there. But yeah, so yeah, but to, but as you said, the Killer Instinct album, man, maybe it, maybe it was just that having the CD at my availability where yeah. it's so ingrained in my head where I'm. It's tough. There's a lot of like, like there's real instrument feels in those synthesizers too, right? Like I don't know how much of that guitar is really being played, mm-hmm. um, you know, things like that. But it's really good, Pretty really, really good. good. Yeah, that's yeah. uh, even uh, Mick Gordon did the new Killer. Like I, I was a big sucker for the new Killer Instinct. Like I really loved it on the Xbox. Um, played as Maya, who I played with in Killer Instinct Two. And that soundtrack that he did for uh, the second game, the the re-release of Killer Instinct, very, very good. Because it has that Doom stank on it that yeah. he did in 2016 Doom, you know? It's very good. I was going to say, Mick Gordon was hitting on all cylinders back in the 2010s. I mean, like, not to take Doom. away from anything else he's done, but, like, yeah. he made, like, any banger soundtrack he had some part in back then. Mm-hmm. Why am I yeah. saying back then? God fucking damn it. <laughs> hey, just a reminder. Resident Evil 5. 15 years <laughs> old. <laughs> God. Wait. Now, so I do have one random question for you, Brad, before we go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, you know, with, with music, and we, we were joking earlier about, like, Doom being something that introduced, lic- mm-hmm. you know, sampling licensing so- license songs. Uh, one of the games Jim and I covered was Metal Hellsinger. I don't know. Oh yeah, that seemed pretty cool. Like yeah. um where you like kinda like uh it's Doom style like attack the baddies to a beat. Right? Yeah, it's yep. basically rhythm based music. FPS. Yeah. So yeah, basically yeah. as you attack, you're trying to attack to the beats of it. And the mm-hmm. more you stay on tempo, the higher power your guy becomes and if you the go more tempo, built like the more thickness to the music it gets. Yep, more yeah, layered exactly. all the tracks. Yep. It always yeah, starts off yeah. with a very basic kind of like drum beat is like doom, doom, doom. Doom. And then all of a sudden, like, a guitar will go in as you, you do that so many beats. And, yeah, it'll turn into full, like, lyrics as you, awesome. you do it. But they got legit, like, artists going in there. So I guess with, with games, we've talked about this last week. Like, the budgets for games are getting out of control, and they're, they're crazy. Mm. Do you think it makes more sense for this kind of style of, like, incorporate licensed music, real artists into it, or... You know, is there still that simplicity and enjoyment to just, you know, someone creating it with synthesizers, not a full orchestra and everything else? Yeah. I mean, I know there's a time and place, but as a musician and as your opinion, what do you think? Like, what what's a better way for games? You know, the meme of the little girl who's like, why not both? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'm putting out a video this week that's like a little bit of both, right? I'm learning synthesizers. Like, I got this little, like 
this M8 tracker that I'm going to start making oh, like shit. chip. I'm going to make chip tune with this and then I'm going to play real drums to it. Oh, sick. So I'm like, I love video game music. Why don't I make my own Game Boy tunes and then play my drums to my own Game Boy tunes? You know what I mean? So like, nice. let's do both, right? And like, let's, uh, but, but to your point, like you can't always have that. It's not always a thing. You know, it's not always available. There's tons of super talented people. Like, I say it to people all the time because I'm friends with people that are making games or producing big games like, you know, this, that, and the other. I'm like, hey, if you need a pause screen, like, yeah. <laughs> I can come up with a really sick Battletoad style pause mm-hmm. screen, you know, or a Goldeneye style pause screen. Let's do it, you know. Um, but there's, the, the, it is a fine line. I don't want to say no instruments, but like I see the benefits of the synth now that I'm like kind of working in some of that stuff. Um to some of my own work as I'm learning the synthesizers, there's so many cool things you can do. Like mm. I'm taking samples of my own drums and I'm putting effects on my own drums and like repeating and like, you know, chopping it up and doing all kinds of cool stuff. And it's like, well, that's me. So it's still me, but now I'm doing computer me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, th- I don't know. It's, it's hard. I, I do want live music to be a thing. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw it, but that guy won a Grammy and was like, he thanked his parents for not buying him video games and no, buying him synthesizers. Yeah, so it's like it, that's one of the things that's like, it's like it's a life goal for me and a number of our friends now at this point. Like we're gonna win. Like we're gonna win an Oscar. We're gonna win a Grammy, and I'm gonna thank video games. Like <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do the complete opposite because they're an inspiration, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think those real instruments should be there and I think it should be worked in with the, uh, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's not just synthesizers, right? Because it's just it's, a, it's, it's yeah, a master it's or a mixer doing that. Yeah. So. What do you feel about though? Some games that take the approach of like, instead of hiring a specific composer or artist mm. or band, they just straight up just license popular songs or just songs in general yeah. that are already out there. I don't want to say that's not a good thing because, for example, the first Alan Wake game, like, I fell in love with that original soundtrack before they lost the rights to some of those songs because, like, and they were written to the story. And they did that again in Alan Wake 2 where they hired, um, they hired musicians to come in with an idea for each song. So they didn't write the song for them, but they told them keep it in these boundaries so that it falls into this chapter, you know? Um, and I love that and I love those songs so much. So I don't want to say, don't just buy the song because sometimes you just buy the song and I'm like, this is perfect. It fits perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but then there's songs that are created at the moment of the story. For example, in control, there's like a metal song that just comes out of nowhere. That's created by the band that was in the Alan Wake game that created a song for the story, you know? So I don't know. There's a lot of avenues there. No, yeah, and that's why I said, like, it, it's, I see certain games now, they're going that avenue of, mm-hmm. I don't want to say movies and shows, but yeah, you'll see, like, a licensed song, and yeah. it'll kind of throw you for a loop, you're like, oh, okay, like, yeah. is that going to become the norm of these, tri- of triple, especially triple A games, like, it's not, yeah. it's never going to happen with indies, but I'm saying, like, that, that uh, Life is Strange is a great example of, like, a perfect soundtrack, and that, that it was all indie songs that were already alive and out in the public that they had um, put together, you know, um, into a soundtrack for that game. And it just worked perfectly. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I want to say yes, but at the same time, I don't want it to be all the same people. You know, I don't want it to be the big names, right? I, don't, I, I want it to be people my size who have 2,000 followers, you know? <laughs> yeah. I want I want everybody's talent to be shown. I want everybody to, you know, not just get their time in the light, but like, like people are super talented. Like I want them to get that exposure. I want our friends to hear how good people are. Yeah. No, no. I and actually that. speaking of music, uh, we've, I, I have one question. So we talked very little, surprisingly little Rex Viper in this episode, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> I want to know, what do you call it? When it comes to the songs, you guys kind of mash together for it, like yeah. doing your page and like playing along to these tunes, as much as you do, like how often do you mm-hmm. jump in and be like, no, 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 don't do this one. Play this song, play this song. <laughs> we we kind of we we do um make demos and kind of share them with each other um m- more ronald and rolf they'll kind of like put them together and say hey what do you think about this um 
you know, take like a, a I don't know, like a, a misfit song and a, a horror song and kind of mush them together. You know, a Castlevania song that works with something that's spooky. We just did it with um, when we went to Portland. We did the song from uh, one of the Friday the Thirteenth movies, the Alice Cooper song. But that's like a straight up cover with a small little video game thing in it, you know. But we wanted to do the cover because we played on Friday the Thirteenth, things like that. So. um it's cool because, I mean, I've never said no, but we have an endless list of these are ones we have to and maybes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like F-Zero's here, right? Like you have all these jams that, you know, are, are absolute bangers on, on different systems that we all love. But sometimes it's hard to just make it work. Um, one of the songs um, I'm having a hard time with, like trying to even get outside my head about is... Um, zombies ate my neighbors like i want to i want to match that up with something else and like the songs that i keep going to just just don't work you know so like that'll kind of happen where you get like a writer's block you just got to kind of step away for a little while and then maybe come back and see if something else you know fits into that um the way we do our music Mm. yeah no that is a good question that's something jim actually I, i was thinking about earlier too I mean, I guess my question is, so knowing, uh, you know, with how busy you guys are, though, do you Mm. have any conventions coming up this year that you can think of or anything? I don't know yet. Um, It's still kind of early for us. Like, we have things out there, but they're all kind of in limbo. Gotcha. Um, So nothing quite official yet. What we're doing, too, is we're trying our best to concentrate on the album. Um, So we have, I would say, probably 90% of it done. Um, just finishing up some keys and some vocals on some of the songs, but we have a 14 track album coming out called a uh, turbocharger deluxe nice. is the name of it. So what we're hoping too, it's, it's big, right? It's like 14 tracks. We're not giving like six tracks. Yeah. So we figured it's been long enough and like we have so many and I think we have like, you know, quite a few, uh, videos in the can ready to go to f- along with these songs, just waiting for the, uh, uh, mastering to be finished and stuff. So. Hopefully nice. we'll have that. Um, maybe too many games, but nothing's been talked about really. Um, I know in August we might have something coming up, but no details quite yet. Um, gotcha. So we'll see. No, yeah. we look forward to it. Like you said, we've obviously seen you guys live. Yeah, it's so much fun. Hey, I guys, love seeing you guys, guys there. Yeah. yeah, you know, you guys do an amazing job. Thanks. And uh, you know, once again, Brad, we want to say thank you so so much for hopping on with us. Yeah, it's thank been great you having you on. So once again, please shout out where should people follow you? What are the links below? And we're gonna add them. Yeah, I, I think best is uh, you can do Drumboy Advance pretty much anywhere. Uh, Drumboy Advance on Instagram, Drumboy Advance Shorts on YouTube. Those are my two favorite places to post. Um, biggest thing is to inspire people. So hopefully people hear it. And like I said, do practice your paradiddles with me or whatever. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, we can't wait to uh, drink with you again in person. Maybe we'll have some pizza beer for you. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> and with that, we want to say thank you, everyone. If you've been listening and watching, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you're listening on YouTube, hit the notification bell. So you see all of our latest shorts and videos as they're released. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, hit the subscribe button. If you give us a five-star rating, even if you want to bash us in the comments, we'll read it on each and every one of these Power Hour podcasts. With that, we want to say have a good night, everyone, and cheers. Cheers, everybody.